What's up, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Nate with Timeless Motors and I'm here to tell you about one thing today, man. The coolest thing since sliced bread for guys like you and me. And it's right here in this case from Shining 3D. Let's go. Now you saw from the title, I am talking about one thing, the Shining 3D Einstar Scanner. This is the Einstar Scanner, and let me tell you why. The Einstar Scanner is the best thing that the average consumer can buy right now to do reverse engineering, 3D scanning, and help with your CAD design. Let's get right into it. Here we're on the Einstar website. I just wanted to give you a quick showing of the website and where you can buy this product. Add it to the cart, it's $959 and it comes super fast. Everything that's included is right here. You get your carrying case, all your cables, you have markers, a calibration board, a wiper, and basically everything you need to get this thing going right here in the case. So I just wanted to show you the website real quick. It's very intuitive. All the information you need is right here. They talk about all of its features, the enhanced detail-oriented technology for data, and everything you need to know right here. So definitely get on the website and place your order through the website versus Amazon or anyone else. I would say it's probably the most reliable. So let's get into it and let's show you how the scanner works. Okay, you guys, we are outside right now. I have a use case to show you the scanner, how it works, and it is anything but ideal outside. So we're gonna push this thing to its limits right now, and I'm gonna show you its real raw capability in a real use case scenario in a real world situation. So I'm gonna give you a little sauce, a couple of little tips and tricks on how to scan really, really large objects that you didn't think was possible. So let's get right into it. With one plug, we're gonna be scanning out of the old trunk of the Jeep today. And I can do this anywhere I go, especially if I have an inverter, a Yeti in the trunk, the possibilities are crazy. So let's get into it. All right, you guys, so mind the junk in the trunk, but with one extension cord, you can run your laptop, plug it in, plug in the scanner, and all you have to do is power the scanner through the USB, and you're ready to go. You can scan out of the trunk, and do some pretty incredible stuff. So I'm gonna throw on the screen capture. I'm gonna show you guys how this program works, and we're gonna really use this scanner today. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so now we're here at the computer. <clears throat> what you do when you open the software, you're gonna be greeted with this message. You're gonna see new project group or open project group. We're gonna create a new project group. Also, when you plug in your device, <clears throat> it's gonna show the device, it's gonna show that it is online or offline, and then you'll be ready to scan. Mine is online, the light is blue, it is lit up, ready to go, plugged in, powered. So let's open our project group. Let's, let's create a new project group. Let's call it Miata. Now we're greeted with the new project page. We can either go portrait mode if you wanna scan people, or we can go object. We're gonna go object today, and we're gonna select medium and large object, okay? There is also modes of alignment. Now these are really important right here. You can choose features, you can choose textures, you can choose hybrid, which uses markers and features, or you can just choose markers. Now, depending on your scenario and your use case, these will work better for different things. Right now, we're actually gonna go straight to features, okay? Features, this is what I found best. We can go hybrid. Well, let's go hybrid first. So I'll show you how it works with features and markers, but features I've found works really, really well on large objects. But let's do this because it shows both. Now, this is super important right here, <clears throat> your resolution. If you have an older computer and you're scanning a super large object, you might wanna take this and you might wanna increase your resolution, okay? You might wanna go to, let's say, within a millimeter deviation, okay? Now, do you want texture? Do you not want texture? Let's go without texture right now, so that way, since we're on the laptop instead of the desktop, it runs a little bit faster. Okay, now let's hit apply. New projects opened. You're gonna see what your scanner sees, okay? On the back of your scanner, you have the buttons where you can adjust your brightness and your zoom, and it just started raining too, so this is gonna be very, very interesting 
but let's get going, okay? I'm gonna turn my brightness up since it's daytime, and I'm gonna make my working distance 600, okay? We're gonna turn the data quality indicator on so that way we can tell when we're getting good data and when our data is complete. Now let's start our scan preview by clicking the middle button on the back of the Einstar. Now we're seeing what our scanner is seeing. On the left here, you can see your distance bar. The closer you get to your object, and the further away you get your, from your object, it'll change. The further away is blue, too close, it's gonna go red. You want it to be in the green zone, okay? It's picking up my hand here, it's picking up the laptop, but let's do what we're supposed to do and get over to the Miata. So here we have the back of the Miata. Let's scan this trunk and let's see, let's throw some of these little marker pyramids. I'll throw the link for the marker pyramids in the description. These are super, super great for saving your markers and not wasting them. You can just throw them on and then cut them out in the mesh later. So let's throw some on. So we toss some on here. Toss some markers, just in case. Just in case since we're using hybrid alignment. Now let's go ahead and get some features showing and then we'll start our scan. Now we're gonna move around and as we move around, you'll see the data turns from red to green. Where it's green, that is good quality data. You see how it's picking up the tail light, it's tracking those features. You see how it sees the view cube? You see how it sees the marker? It'll lose tracking if you lose the features. It's starting to rain pretty hard, so let's actually just scan this taillight here. We're gonna go around the taillight, we're gonna go down. We're gonna use a 45 degree sweep, and we're gonna just collect data from every angle possible, so that way our 3D model is complete. We're gonna go around here. We're gonna go around here. You can wash it out, start to pick up some of the tail lights. I mean, start of the uh, license plate area. You can bring it down. It's starting to rain pretty hard here. So I'm gonna actually wrap this up. So let's check this out. Here we have, let's bring it over here. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going since we're just out here. Let's keep it going. We're going to get some of this fender flare as well. See how it's tracking those features? We don't even need... See how I was just going to go straight to features? We don't even need the markers for this because they're such good features. But on like a flat panel van or something like that, you're going to need those markers. Okay. Now let's bring it down. Look as it starts to capture this wheel. You see how it's starting to capture the wheel and it can track the wheel? Now let's bring it in there. Let's bring it into the wheel. Not the best lighting. Super, super hard surface because it's chrome. I have not treated it. I have not sprayed it with any sort of powder. So this is gonna be really, really difficult to pick up the chrome. You might wanna use some athlete's foot spray, some powder spray, and that way you can collect better data on surfaces that are completely reflective, okay? That's just a pro tip right there. Now we're gonna come around down here. We can scan under the car. As long as you keep track of those features, that feature set, it will keep scanning. All right, guys, it's starting to rain now, so let's just cut the scan here. All right, guys, it's raining. We have some scan data. Let's check out the scan data, and I'll show you guys what to do with it. Okay, so now we're here. We're just in the computer, guys. We're just in the computer outside in the rain. Now let's check out the data that we captured in this environment. This was a tough scan because of where we're at and what we're doing. We picked up a little bit of accessory data, but here is your toolbar 
down here. Now this software is great. The X-Star software is awesome. You can make a cutting plane and completely cut from a plane. We have a multi-view cube right here. You can have all your lasso and cutting tools right here. And then you can delete the data. So let's go ahead, let's use our lasso tool. Hit shift, go around the data that you want to delete and delete the selected data. Now we're going to go in down here a little bit further. There's some more dirty data here. We're just going to delete that data. Click in on the scroll wheel, drag, left click to pan around, to move around. There we go. I'm sorry. Now we can delete that data. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete some of this accessory data as well that came in on top of the tail light. Delete that data. Let's go in a little closer. So if you use the lasso tool, you start it up here and then you go down here, you can make a straight edge, cut that data, make a straight edge, cut that data, make a straight edge, cut that data. And you're left with pretty much clean data. There we go. You see that? We're cleaning up our scan. Let's go to fitting view, get it back in. Let's see what we're looking at. Now let's get rid of some of this accessory data on the outside. So let's just go here. Let's cut that off. Delete that data. Let's go here. Let's cut that off. Delete that data. Let's go here. Cut that off. Delete that data. Delete that. Now what we're left with is a pretty decent bit of scan here. Let's go ahead and apply the edit. Alright guys, now that the software has applied the edit and deleted our data, we can go in, look at some of our data, see, yeah, we've got some pretty good stuff we could reference. Okay, this is just an example, but let's go ahead and generate our point clouds. Optimizing and generating the point clouds is going to create the mesh. All right, and now you can see we are left with a mesh. All right, a pretty decent mesh. If I had longer than like the 30 seconds I had to scan this, we could have gotten in, we could have captured all of this detail, okay? This was the most rugged scan. I wanted to show you how this works in the most ridiculous environments. And still, we picked up very high quality data. I mean, we have the rivets, okay, right there. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to now mesh the model. You can choose a few different ways to mesh your model. You can do unwatertight, semi-watertight, and watertight. You can choose different filtering options, smoothing options, remove small floating parts. You could simplify it. And there's a whole bunch of different other parameters you can mess with. Fill the holes and remove the spikes. We're gonna go ahead and just let it eat on the stock settings right here on a semi-watertight model, and we're just going to hit apply. All right, guys, and you can see now that we have our meshed model. It has smoothed, it has tried to fill some holes, and it's looking pretty decent. Um, looking at our flare, it's looking pretty decent. But let's go ahead and just hit confirm. I'm going to quickly pause recording and then I'm going to jump back into this inside because it is raining on me. All right. So these are super, super bad conditions. It's actually raining outside right now on me, but I want to show you something you can do really quick before I go inside. If you're not happy with the scan data that you collected. So I'm going to wipe this down really quick, this taillight. Okay. Because it's soaking wet and I'm going to try and quickly, quickly, quickly before it 
it gets wet and rains on me again <laughs> and I get my super nice scanner wet, I'm going to try and collect a little bit more data on this taillight and fill it in. All right, so let's try this out. All right, you guys, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the scan. It's going to delete our mesh surface. It's going to take us back and we can continue scanning. Okay, so I'm going to hit the preview scan button on my scanner. We can see where our data was good and where our data was bad with the data quality indicator right here. So let's get into this taillight real quick and try to get a little bit better data. The rain's starting to hit. It's literally, it's literally raining on me. I, I gotta stop. <laughs> but I think we got a little bit more data. All right, so let's go ahead in here and let's see the data that we got really quick. We're going pure savage mode, guys, out here. Let's do it. We got a little accessory data here. We can clean this up real quick with our lasso. Let's go ahead and chop that away that let's go around here look at that you see that data it's kind of easy to find you just go like this and chop that away okay let's delete that and then let's go here let's chop that away let's delete that okay now we're gonna go back out and I mean we cleaned it we got a little bit more data not too much because what we're dealing with here but um, let's just go ahead and apply the edit. All right, guys, now that we have applied the edit, we can go back through our same progress here, through our same process here, I'm sorry, and we can generate our point clouds. All righty, guys, now that we have generated our point clouds, we can go ahead and mesh our data. Let's fill the holes. Let's just up this because we have some pretty big holes. Let's just go 100. Okay, and let's just go, let's go medium on the smoothing. And let's just make it look really modely. Let's apply this. All right, guys, that might have been a little bit too much on the simplification. So let's crank that down. Let's go back let's crank that down sometimes I like zero simplification especially when you're reverse engineering off of your data you don't want that simplification at all really you want your raw data so let's do that let's go ahead let's go low on the smoothing no simplification and let's hit apply it's literally pouring rain while I make this video for you guys this is real dedication let's do this all right so here we have a pretty decent model of the back end of the Miata. Okay, you can see our ducktail. You can see our rocket bunny kit. We can pan around. You can see the dent in my quarter panel. Okay, and now this is going to be great to reference data. If you want to build something, let's say this was the front. Let's say you wanted to build some canar canards. Let's say you wanted to, you know, redesign your taillight housing. All the data you need is here to trace and do everything you want to do. You can play with all of your mesh options and get the best model that you want to get. So let's hit confirm. Now we have our mesh editing page. We can simplify our model. We can optimize the mesh. We can smooth the mesh. We can remove small floating parts. We have auto hole filling, which is pretty awesome. We have manual hole filling, which shows the holes. You click the hole and it fills the hole. Watch, let's do this. Let's fill some holes. Boom, filled. Boom, filled. Now this is really fast and really quick if you want to clean up your mesh before you go ahead and work it. Sometimes you may want to do this, sometimes you might not want to do this, but the option is there. Also, auto hole filling, it's going to find those holes and it's most likely going to fill them all for you, uh, depending on the parameter you put. 
So let's go back to our manual hole filling. Let's quickly refill these holes because that was working really nice. Takes not that much time. And just for fun, we'll fill these two. Now look at that. We have a pretty clean model. Let's go ahead and confirm. Check that out. Very nice. Very, very nice. Look at the detail on the duck bill. Look at the detail. And this would be a lot better detail if I had sprayed it first, if we had any sort of better lighting. And when I say sprayed, I mean with some sort of powder spray. Um, there's a million things I could have done to make this better. We did this in the roughest, most raw, fast scan type scenario. I mean, literally, you saw me on the camera. It was just a minute or two. We can also um, use a cutting plane. We can flip the, the model or mirror the model. And mirroring the model is pretty cool. You can find a cutting plane, slice the model, and then mirror the model. Let's say you scanned one half of a car and it came out really well. You could find the middle section of it, cut the car, and then mirror the car. Okay? Now we can save our scan. Let's go ahead and save our scan. We can save it in, as an STL, OBJ, many multiple files uh, that are good for 3D printing and, you know, thrown into Fusion 360. Um, so that really is it for this scan. Let's see if we have time to show you another scan. Okay, guys, so let's mess around since it's pouring rain on me and let's scan this interior cubby. So let's say you want to design a subwoofer enclosure for this cubby or a storage box. We're going to scan this cubby right now and I'm going to show you what that process is like. All right, guys, so we're going to open up a new project group again. We're going to call this cubby. We're going to go ahead and open this. We're going to do the same thing as before, only we're going to use features this time only. We're going to increase our resolution. Excuse me if there's a lot of noise behind me. It is pouring rain. Let's go ahead and let's turn our texture on just for fun on this one so we can see the detail. And we'll hit apply. Start our scan preview. Let's adjust our brightness here a little bit. Turn the brightness up a little bit. Then let's also increase our working distance so we can fit more of that cubby, okay? Now let's go ahead and start our scan. So I'm going to pick up some features so that way I have some good tracking. It's tracking pretty well. Getting into this cubby here. Let's go ahead and hit the cubby from a few different angles and fill these voids. Look at that. There we go. Get up in there. Get up into that void. Let's move it back. Let's move it closer. Let's rotate it. And let's try and collect as much data in that cubby as possible. Okay. Let's get this cubby. Let's get this cubby. So we're hitting it. We're going all the way around it. Got a nice distance here, nice brightness. I think it's like in this scan. Now, let's get some additional stuff in there. Like the laptop. In the back of the seat just to show you some extra texture detail just for fun because this scanner is crazy we're still picking it up it's still tracking really well straight up off of feature mode okay all right now let's get back to this cubby let's get back to this cubby let's collect a little bit more data and i think we're good i mean I know we're good. All right. Now, 
let's look at our scan. Now check this out, you guys. Look at this scan, okay? Look at this texture detail. Look at what we got going on here. We got my rag, we have my mouse, we have the cubby, okay? And now let's say we just wanna take this cubby, okay? All I want is the cubby. Let's go ahead and lasso is my favorite tool. You can make a straight line. Plain cut is pretty badass as well, but lasso is fast. I don't feel like a cowboy in XDAR. So let's go ahead and delete this data. Let's zoom out. Let's go ahead and delete this data. Let's swing it around. Let's go ahead and delete all of this data because we don't want anything in front of that. Let's go ahead and swing it back. Looking pretty good. We're getting in there. Okay, now let's say we only want the cubby. Okay, let's get really technical here. Let's get close, okay? So I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna look down at it. Zoom out. And I'm gonna lasso this up. We're gonna go ahead and delete that. I could have used plain cut for that. It would have been super fast. But I'm just feeling like a cowboy, so we're lassoing. All right, we're gonna delete this data. We're gonna go to fitting view, just for fun. We're gonna spin it around. Now we're left with a pretty good cubby. Let's go ahead and cut this, delete it, cut this, actually no. Cut this, no. Start down here, there we go, I like that. Delete that. Delete that. Actually, let's just delete all this. Let's just get straight to the cubby. Delete it. Okay, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, now let's go ahead and apply the edit. All right, guys. Now we are left with a pretty remarkable bit of data of our cubby. I think I cut off a little bit too much right there. Eh, but it's okay. Now we still have all of our profile. All right, so let's go ahead in here and let's optimize and generate our point clouds. All right, you guys, and now that we have our mesh, you can see that we're left with some pretty astonishing data. Okay, we have a super clean, high texture, high detail model of this cubby. Um, it's looking pretty phenomenal. It's definitely looking pretty phenomenal. Now we can go ahead and mesh the model. Don't really have to do much to this one. We're just going to hit apply. I'm going to hit the filter on low though because this is already looking so nice. All right guys, now that we have our meshed model, we have something that we could load into a video game. I mean, literally, we can do anything with this. Let's go ahead and hit confirm. We can do any editing to our model right here. We've already gone over that. I don't need to do any editing to this model because it's already pretty much perfect. One awesome feature, we can save this now. You know, we can do our thing. We can share it. We can save it as an STL. We can bring it into Fusion 360, but one amazing feature we can do is actually measure. So now we have the measurement feature. You can go to measurement tools right here. You can select two points, let's say right here and right here, and it'll give you the exact distance, okay? You can go from here. Let's do that again. You can go from here to here. It'll give you that exact distance. You can also do surface area, and you can check out the volume, okay? But these measuring tools are super valuable because you can select two points, and then you can measure it and reference the data and make sure that your scan is accurate, which I've found these all to be very accurate. So this is pretty ridiculous. The Einstar absolutely rocks. I hope you see its application and use case. These models that you're left with are very, very high end. All right, guys, that was crazy scanning outside. 
and we scan some big stuff on the big cars. I'm going to show you how to scan a small car. High detail, small object, all black, reflective surfaces, not the best. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so the first thing I did is I sprayed down the model with some body spray. Okay, that's the pro tip. Use some freaking foot spray or some body spray. It's way cheaper. Okay. And we're going to go here. And we're going to start our scan preview. Looking pretty good. We got some markers tracking. The Jeep is tracking. Let's see if this is a decent enough setting to collect some data on this little baby rank. I'm going to go around the object. Make sure I get a lot of data on these nice tracking towers because it really helps so you don't lose the model because there's a lot of losing track that happens. The slower you move, and sometimes the angle you're at, it's going to help you get some better data. So, play around with it. They're looking pretty decent. We're starting to gather some good data here. The Jeep is turning green. So we're getting at least some data. Let's see some of these towers in the view here. And work up the back of the Jeep. Work up the rear. Around the rear. You're going to have to play with it. Now I'm on my laptop, so it's a little slower with the tracking. I'm working on a laptop that is not up to the specifications. It should be, but we're still making it happen. Go straight down at it. Over the top. Now let's see what kind of data we have here. Not too bad. A little messy. Let's try and get a little bit more. I just scanned my belly a little bit. You will have to cut that data out. Now let's see what kind of data we got here. Let's chop away some stuff. Like my belly. The bottom of this. Now let's go in. We have a little bit of duplicate data, but for references, let's just go ahead and work with this. You can turn your texture on and off, and you can also turn your markers on and off. Let's go ahead and apply this at it. All right, here we can show or hide the texture. There is the texture. We're going to hide that. 
Let's go ahead and before we delete any of this accessory data, let's go ahead and generate the point cloud and see what we're left with. All right, guys, and you can see we're left with a pretty decent mesh of the Jeep. Okay, let's go to the fitting view. We got a little bit of bad data on the wheels here. You can cut most of that away. For a quick dirty scan, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and chop some of this away. Now what we're left with is somewhat of a Jeep. Okay. And let's go ahead and mesh the data. We're going to go ahead and we're going to choose semi-water type for now. And let's see how it looks. Alright guys, and what we're left with is a pretty decent looking Jeep Wrangler. I mean, we can see Jeep in the grill. Overall, not bad. All right, guys, so what we're left here with is a pretty decent little model. I'd like to see a little bit more detail, but I did a pretty quick, pretty quick scan here. Let's say you wanted to use this model and make a, a car body for a RC car. You could go ahead and delete these wheels you go ahead and let's make a uh, straight line and you have a pretty decent body for your Jeep you can go ahead into your mesh mixer or other programs and clean up these extra little bits of data here. And this is off of a toy car, so keep in mind what we're working with here. Overall, not bad. Definitely workable, definitely fun, and this took just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You can save your scans, do anything you want to do. Now hopefully this showed you some of the capabilities of the Einstar scanner. Well guys, that is it for today's video. Big shout out to Shining 3D, even though they are not sponsoring this video, but shout out to them for making such a cool product. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And check us out for more videos in the future on 3D scanning, reverse engineering, 3D printing, and just cool general automotive content. So I really appreciate you guys checking this out. Get out there, start scanning, start making, and see what is possible within your reach. See you guys on the next one. Cheers.